Okay. Okay. So, good morning. So today we are going to see some uh, different topics. Just uh, to recall, we said that this class it's um, called like a science around us. So it means that during this kind of uh, meetings and regular meetings that we're going to have, we are uh, looking at some particular aspects that usually are related to the physics world. And um, we are trying to understand how some of those principles then can be applied in, a, in every a thing, in every, in several things that we do in everyday life. And uh, today, uh, we are going to talk about the heat. Okay, so how we can use this. And uh, this is in preparation of, uh, so we're going to do like today and next time some few concepts with few examples, general examples, funding through different um, things in which we can apply physical concepts. And uh, because this will be in preparations of the meeting that we're going to have, not next time, but the other one. So we are going to have all the main ingredients because someone was asking for looking at particular aspects, scientific aspects applied to the kitchen. So what kind of science we use when we cook and we don't know that we're using actually uh, scientific tools. Okay, so we already mentioned and uh, we saw some applications of several techniques and technologies uh, for cultural heritage, right? And we saw that some of the principles were kind of basic principles that can be extended, of course, and uh, technology can help uh, and we can do something. In that particular case, we were looking underneath uh, a monument or an artifact without even touching it or destroying, alterated it at all. Um, in order to start to uh, put us in the picture, we also looked at the what we call the scientific method, right? And the scientific method is always there, and at least is our driving factor for these meetings that we are having this month. Because the scientific method, it's something that we need always to uh, consider and rely on. What does it mean, considering scientific method? Scientific method means that I can do a certain experiment. I can observe a certain phenomenon eventually try to find the theory, do the experimentation, confirm the theory, and then everyone, or myself, everyone else, would be able to reproduce what I have done, obtaining exactly the same results, okay? So we need to keep always this in mind. So the concepts that we're gonna look even today will follow under this, um, kind of approach. So what we're saying today, we will see that some few principles are applied in several things. As usual, like if you have any doubts while I'm talking or eventually anything crops up, uh, just uh, stop me and uh, I'll try my best to reply. Okay, 
let's start with um, this concept, okay? Temperature, it's something that is major, measured by a thermometer, uh, okay? And uh, this is the classical thermometer. Now we are not used to see those anymore, I guess, and uh, no um, regular uh, thermometers or the one on the left because we are used this thermoscanner that we do like um, measure the temperature like every morning even here. Like we, we used to measure temperature, our body temperature using those thermometers. But in general, when we measure the temperature, what do we mean? What are we looking at? So we're looking at the measurements that characterize the energy of the atoms and molecules in a certain object. Okay? So we are looking at their status and we will see that um, this is what we call temperature. So we are introducing and we measure through that particular instrument. But in here we are introducing another keyword that usually we use quite wisely and uh, sometime in a very uncontrolled manner. But the other word that we are introducing here and that is kind of a key word that we're going to use and repeat several times today, it's energy, okay? So let's see what energy means and uh, how it is related to heat, or is energy and heat the same thing? Okay, so when we talk about energy and heat, we look at the atomic scale, we look at very small scale that we can uh, consider the, mat the matter formed of, and we look at the several type of motions that those atoms can have. And this motion creates this energy. When we talk about heat, we consider and we refer to the presence of this energy and that characterize the, um, that is characterized by the temperature of a certain object. And we consider this, um, that's what we call the heat, okay? So it, the heat is a form of energy. Now, in general, when we even use the word heat, energy has to be considered in the context that we're using that particular word. And uh, in physics, heat is usually understood to be the energy which is transferred from one object to another. So we are talking about heat when we consider a transfer of energy from two subjects, from two objects. And then instead with energy, uh, we um, refer to the thermal energy, which is proper of that particular object. Okay, so from now on, when we're going to have and to use the word it is the energy transfer, okay? So when we transfer this energy from one body to another one, okay? This can happen in several ways. Now, in general, this heat transfer can happen in three main classes or three main way of, uh, of doing it. Are the one, depicted in blue on this um, uh, screenshot, okay? So there are the conduction, convention, and radiation. Now, we will see that those are, like if we want to simplify a bit this uh, kind of concepts, those are the main, the three main mechanisms on that summarize all the potential heat transfer from one body and another. And then, of course, they can happen in some particular context or other particular ones. And we will see also that some of those are able to explain several of the phenomenon that we observe in the daily life.
Okay, let's start with the first one. Let's talk about conduction. So, conduction. We don't have conduction if we do have two objects and we place them in contact. Simply, that's what happens, right? Even in this uh, cold weather, like if we have like uh, a warm mug, right? And our hands are kind of cold and we have this kind of warm mug full up of uh, tea, coffee, whatever we like, chocolate. We don't have a direct contact. So we can feel that transfer of heat, right? From one object to another. So we do have this direct exchange of energy from the hot object to the cold object, okay? And this is the main and the easiest way of um, uh, thinking about the conduction. Now, what actually are we transferring? How then this will affect the temperature? of the two objects that we are considering because we do have two object A which is in here considered to be the red one and then we do have the cold one which is the blue okay and we do have another ingredient that it's always there either we like it or not that it's time let's see what happened through times all those things we call them as function of time. So they evolve, they change uh, as time goes by. Um, so let's see what happens. We say temperature. Temperature, something happens to the temperature. So we say that temperature is the actual, the measure of this energy, the measure of this heat. Okay. So what happened to our man? Uh, which is hotter than our hands eventually, right? And at a certain point, this mark, as time goes by, will start cooling down. And temperatures tend to equalize after a certain time, okay? This obviously in real life can be influenced by several other factors, but in general, in principle, that's what we see, okay? And... We know, for example, if we don't have a mug or a cup of coffee, that after, I don't know, I'm just guessing, uh, 10 minutes, it's not hot anymore and uh, we don't like it and we don't drink it anymore, okay? My wife takes even less than this, and that's, that's okay. All right? So what happened to that hot cup of coffee? To that hot cup of coffee, it has transferred some heat to something else, okay? And then temperature tends to be equalized with the, um, uh, with the environment in a certain period of time. When they're equal, the other key words that we use in this particular case, we say that the two objects that are in contact and the hot uh, object is transferring heat energy to the other one is uh, we said that the two are in thermal equilibrium okay and um, we can have an example okay in which we do have this okay that's supposed to be, I don't know, chicken, turkey, something hopefully eatable after we transform it from uncooked to cooked, right? But the, in the conventional oven, what happens? We do have two things, okay, that are into the oven. One is the, oh, it's a turkey, it's written here. <laughs> turkey that we do have into the oven right and then we will see when we do the uh, what happens actually why that meat eventually change in color in taste and so forth but we will see this as we go along for now we are looking at the method that eventually will allow that chicken or that turkey to be 
uh, to be eaten, to be good to be eaten. And we do have hot air in the oven that is conducted, that conducts into the turkey. So there is this transfer of heat. And we know that something is happening in that oven, right? And we know this by experience, right? As a human being, we have been using fire and heat quite a, quite a bit to cook our, uh, our meals, right? It's not a something that happens magically, that we put something, one color, and we get some uh, the same uh, with a different color, right? It's because we do have the heat. Uh, so, from experience, even just looking at this uh, simple and um, I would say even silly example, we can certainly state and touch with our own experience that in a system like this, so in the classical oven that we use, we do have a thermal gradient. We do have something that is happening due, due to the thermal activity, okay? So what we do have, we do have that the top part, and that's what we do have even in here in this schematic part, is that in the odd part of the, uh, just one sec, if, oh, too much, uh, of the oven, the uh, air and the top part is hotter than the lower part. Okay, so that's the conventional oven. And we know this even by experience, right? Because we also, according to the stuff that we have to cook, we put the meal, the food, at different levels into the oven, right? And this is due to this. Now, the ovens can be a little bit more complicated. This is the very conventional one. Now they are ventilated, they allow circulation of, uh, with them because they do have the fan, but that is to avoid that you have or that we have two uh, different temperature in two different size uh, si um, portions or part of the oven. So that ventilation actually allow the air to mix and to get uniform and to cook uniformly the, uh, the things. Obviously, when we cook, and we will see this, uh, also the material that we're using for cooking will... Uh, affect the way the final product that will look like, right? So if we use a pan of a certain material or another material, uh, because obviously then the system is much more complicated than the one that we do have in a schematic way over here, and we do have the interaction and the heat of transfer due to different materials. So not all the materials are transferring the heat, are conducting the heat in the same way, okay? Just off of records, or uh, just to deviate a bit, it's not off of records because still I'm recording it, but um, uh, usually either at this point or somewhere when I talk about these things, immediately comes uh, into my mind the example of kind of uh, magicians, let's say, or people that are sometimes called magicians, at least in Italy they are called like this, that they are able to walk on very hot uh, piece of coal, right? And, uh, you know, then sometimes on TV they have this uh, experiment and they say, oh, uh, you know, this guy is going to walk, I don't know, 10 meters and the and the speaker says, oh, this is going to work 10 meters, the temperature is this much and we can use to cook and uh, do this and do that. Uh, well, okay. And so people look at this and say, oh, it, it does it. And everyone uh, clap their hand and say, bravo, bravo, well done, well done. Yeah. Now, is there anything magic in there? Hmm? 
a factor of time, but eventually, if there will be one of us next time sitting into the audience, and that particular guy is pissing us off quite a bit, eventually, then we can raise our hand and say, look, can you do the same experiment? Keeping everything just the same. So you're going to walk 10 meters, okay, on a certain material that is at that particular temperature. Now, I don't know the temperature, but just I'm guessing a number, 400 Celsius degree. And, uh, but instead of having coal, you're going to have, we're going to put piece of iron. Okay, we can measure the temperature and we can assure you that you're going to stay always at 400 degrees and you do 10 meters. I would make it even easier for you eventually. Instead of 10 meters, you just walk two meters or even one meters and a half. If he's a magician, right, is withstanding the temperature, you could do it just the same. He is going to accept the challenge. So we're keeping everything similar, even better. So we're keeping the same temperature because that guy is kind of um, proving that he can withstand at that particular heat, at that particular temperature. But instead of 10 meters, we would say, ah, oh, whatever, let's do two meters. Is he going to accept the challenge? My educated guess, it says, no, it's not going to. Can you eventually think why? I think I heard the right word. Right, exactly, because and the metal transfers the heat much faster. Okay, so what does it do? So, and then eventually we can do even the physics of magic one, like after the kitchen, okay? Like we can reveal like all the tricks that obviously they need to be trained. They need to know what they're doing, but actually they are using principles that, of physical principle that we use every day. When they walk on, uh, on the call, right? What, what they do is just do this. So they put their foot down and they quite fastly, they just get one up and just move him. They are not going to stand, of course, in, on, on it, right? So they move quite fast. What happens then? That when the foot is going up, it's cooling down and then going down again, okay? Eating up, cooling down. And the transfer of heat, is not that fast, okay? And that fraction of a second that stays on top, he cannot uh, burn too much his foot or hand, whatever is <laughs> whatever is using, right? Instead, with iron, which has a different conductivity, which actually permits the heat to be transferred, let's say, in a faster manner. He cannot do that because as it touches, it sticks on top of and on uh, on the iron, on the metals, whatever. Okay, so it will not accept it. Okay, so there is no magic in that. It's just that he's using the properties of those concepts that we are simplifying here for his own benefit. He has to do the show. It's fine. Everyone is happy. I'm happy with that. No, no problem. But the actual, there is an actual explanation big, uh, on it. And uh, just to stay on um, silly example, we do, we know this even when we do the barbecue, right? When we do the barbecue, if like a piece of meat goes directly on the coal, we just take it up even with our hands, okay? It's not burning. We take it up, shake it just for the hash to go away, and then place on the grill. It's something that we can do. And if we have to 
take like a piece of coal or something, we can even bounce it on our ends and nothing major eventually will happen. But if by mistake, we put our finger or even into the oven on the frying pan or on the grill or whatever, immediately we burn our fingers, arm, whatever we're going to uh, place in contact. It's exactly the same principle. So that's the reason why it does that experiment, which again, it needs to be done after a certain training and, and study after it. But that guy can do that just because he is helped not by magical forces or by extraordinary powers, but it's helped by the physics of the experiment that actually is doing, okay? It's a little bit bombastic, but still a physical experiment, okay? When we talk about like uh, transfer of heat, it's uh, quite uh, also kind of topical and uh, common to discuss this thing, especially in winter, when we look at building materials and insulation of walls, right? Now there are like uh, new EU laws, enforcement, whatever that we need to do, like with the energetic class, Always we are demanding more energy, more and more energy. So we need to find a way even to save or not to waste energy, okay? Now, in general, there is then a value that is associated with the building material that gives an attempt to quantify the heat flow through that material. So if heat flow means how heat will be lost eventually in this room, okay? Then according to the insulation, according to the material that we do have, then we do, can save at the end of the day, even energy, right? Because if we lose less heat, then we need less energy to actually produce new heat to keep that place warm enough or at a constant temperature, okay? And uh, that's, it's called R factor or R value. And uh, it has uh, like a physical meaning. It goes with the units. Uh, obviously, it's not a surprise that in some places, the units are different. So the values associated with it are different just because it's different way of looking at it. In case of US and Canada, for example, they use Fahrenheit instead of Celsius they used uh, feet squared instead of uh, square meters and so on. Okay, so this value, thank you, move on. Huh? That, uh, yes, I don't know what material is that. Sorry, but it crashed. I have to restart the the PowerPoint. Sorry. Yes, yeah, sure. Yes. Right. And now, now we'll get to that. You are just anticipating <laughs> the next one. So, so in class, I should say all your horses, young man. So, <laughs> so we will get to that. <laughs> yes, no, no, but no, that's that's very for now. It's uh, it's a different way of transfer because no, no, we will see. Because remember, like a few minutes ago, we mentioned three major way the. Uh, conduction, convection, and radiation, okay? So for now, we are going to go like through contact. So we don't have those two physical objects, whatever it is, our hand and the source of, uh, or and something and an object that is out there, or, so they are in contact, okay? And this heat is transferred from one to another. Yes, sir. 
Yes, 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 of course. But uh, in any case, the sun, we don't touch it, right? It's far away. So still we're getting, as you rightly were introducing, we're getting the energy, almost what we need, or a bunch of, of, of it through and from the sun, but we don't touch it. So it has to be a different mechanism that you want that we're talking now. And we're going to get to it uh, just in a little while. Okay? So be patient, 10 more minutes. <laughs> and um, no, no, yes. No, no, that's fine. And um, so in general, we do have this value that is indicated with R that it will tell us how good the insulation is going to be. If that one is large, okay, it means that it will allow small losses due to the conduction, okay? And uh, so in practical way, it's a number that we do have to recognize and to classify the different materials. But the way this value is uh, actually computed, it... Uh, includes uh, like a kind of way, engineering way of calculating this number, okay? And uh, of course, we need to consider like if we do have the interior wall uh, or any other material in between uh, and so forth. But this could be as complicated and could be adjusted. That's why we don't buy just one panel and we solve our problem, okay? Has to be engineering calibrated. The same goes when we talk about insulation for noise, right? It's not just that one panel which it's able to absorb a different kind of energy, that's a vibrational energy, that it's produced by sounds or noise in general, it has to be properly designed and calibrated. So everything doesn't go to just one number, but has to be engineering designed to actually accomplish the mission that we do have, to actually accomplish the needs and to respond to the needs that we have in that particular condition. Yes, sir. Right, that is due to the nature of, um, of the limestone, okay? Uh, and it has to do with the even water content that eventually it can absorb, release, and water. And water is something that will affect these things because obviously it will have uh, consequences on the humidity. The humidity then will affect the temperature, how this, it has to do even with ventilations eventually as well and so on. In fact, the canteens and whatever we do have below the ground, they do have, um, they are much more humid than we do have on the top floors, right? And But we can uh, see this when we look at the, because actually, oh, we didn't finish this last year because of the COVID, but we can look at the geology of the Maltese Islands and the properties of all these stones and uh, the difference. But the main uh, reason, I think, is due to the um, way they are favorable to conduction, to the loss of it, and water, and the water content into it also plays a role, okay? Um, in order to even consider uh, the transfer of it, sometimes we prefer, or in particular context, talking about the cooling of a particular thing. Well, uh, in this case, we are looking at or introducing a um, concept which is cooling by evaporation. It's something that it's very common. We do it all the time, right? Eventually, we don't know it. But it's uh, a mechanism that is uh, 
quite used in nature. Okay. And if you look at this, and even if you match colors, you can immediately actually um, retrieve the mechanism that we where we use this. Okay. So to evaporate, the drop turn into vapor, and in order to do that, requires energy. Can you actually explain a kind of a mechanism where this, this is happening? The humidifier? Uh, no, that one absorbs, uh, yes, but the, exactly, that's the actually that I were looking for, right? The body, okay, our body. So in summer, right, what happened if we stay in the sun? Okay, okay, we'll get tanned, nice. But the skin, our body in general, will become kind of hotter, right? So we do need a mechanism, a protection mechanism that actually has to try to keep the temperature down or a certain level, and we don't want to exceed some particular thresholds, right? Because otherwise, more complicated matter will happen, okay? And, uh, okay, I'm revealing one secret. Eventually, we are going to look at some, not from the medical aspects, of course, but the physics of our body and how those principles are used to explain our body in general. But this is something that uh, we will do as we go along, like one, uh, like within two, no, three or four lectures. So this mechanism, so we produce some uh, and we lose some liquids, right? When this happens in summer and we lose more liquids in summer than we do in winter, right? It's because of this mechanism, because the temperature is increasing. So we need a system to actually keep that temperature controlled, steady at one point. So we release some fluids. These fluids, what do they do? Huh? They evaporate, okay? And in order to do that, to evaporate, they need energy, okay? It's like when we boil water to make pasta, okay? What do we do? We need to give energy to the water to increase the temperature of the water from whatever the top temperature that we do have to a certain one we will see this later on and that with that hot water we can do something into the pasta into the tea because the heat then is acting on that particular object trans slightly transforming it and but we are giving energy, and we're giving the energy through the fire. So we are increasing the temperature. The mechanism, more or less, and somehow it's similar. So we do have increase of temperature. We do release liquids. They evaporate. And for evaporating, they need to absorb energy. Okay? So the energy is invested to actually make that liquids to evaporate, okay? That's how we get uh, the system done. Um, obviously, we do have several factors that we need to consider, and we need to, have to consider the evaporation rate, okay? So it depends on the temperature, the difference between the skin and the air, that's uh, extremely important, okay? And uh, so if we do have large differences, we do have high evaporation rate or no water droplet built up on the skin in the case of uh, uh, cold weather. Yes, right. Yes, exactly, exactly, when we're sweating, okay? And... Um, Body temperature now it's that's all right. 
No, it's it's a nice music. We like it. So, and uh, so we try to keep it that constant. Okay. So when we are in hot weather, okay, the sweating mechanism is the one that is in here uh, considered um, and uh, schematized and uh, is the one that we explained already. So we release this uh, water, this liquid, it's not just the pure water, of course, and uh, this can evaporate, so we're sweating, and keep the body temperature at a certain level, okay? Why did I say it's not just water, okay? We can tell it's not just water, right? It, it smells, right? So it's not just pure water, and in fact, we know that, for example, if that, then that smell has some other uh, factors, right, that one of that is also the, um, depending on what we eat, let's put this way, in general, okay? So if we, our daily supply of garlic or onions, it's quite massive, the smell will be different if we do have, like, huh? Eh? Uh, yes, exactly, uh, exactly, exactly. So it's um, it's not just pure water, but in general, obviously, just to simplify, we consider yes, treatment tablets, uh, a lot of things. They made this uh, this different, but for our little example, we're just talking about water. But just for sake of completeness, it's not just pure water, but there is something uh, that goes with it. Uh, okay, the second mechanism, okay, that we consider and we need to um, take into account when we talk about heat transfer is the convection. The convection um, is when we do have heat transfer between objects and moving fluids, okay, so either a gas or a liquid. Again, with fluid, we consider both gases and liquid, okay? Then uh, this could be very efficient in some cases, and we will see some examples in which this it's uh, an efficient cooling system, okay? Which is eventually in some cases, and we will see a few applications of uh, efficiency uh, in respect to actually the flow of air, Okay, um, and depends on the speed of the fluid. Okay, so the faster the fluid flows, the more efficient the heat transfer is. Okay, and then in here we do have in blue this little hint. Think about sitting in a, a drafted rooms; it feels colder. Okay, because it allow the heat to be transferred in a very efficient way, okay? Let's see now how this could be considered, like in one example, a chilling factor, okay? Uh, for, and we look the wind chilly factor, okay? Wind chill is a result of a much colder, the, um, of how much colder the air seems to be when it's windy, and these are extra heat losses from convection as well as conduction, okay? So, and this we experience quite uh, constantly. And actually, in the last few days, temperature itself was not that low, right? We were like in the order of the, I think, like around uh, midday, was around 20, 19, 18, something like that. So it's, uh, as a temperature, it's pleasant on its own, but it was windy. That wind, it's kind of that chilling factor that allow to actually lose, to, trans to transfer heat and to lose heat in that particular case faster, okay? And therefore, we do get that uh, extra cooling. And this we use in the summer as well, it's quite common with people having fun 
just like three two i seen i have seen people actually suffering of the heat every like more than one fan in every direction to try to maximize maximize this uh flow of air to try to get extra cooling pleasure due to this mechanism okay um obviously there are like uh, several kind of calculations that can be done uh, in order to have um in order to consider this wind chill factor okay so then if we are facing uh, the wind if we're wide walking into the wind on a certain particular um, velocity or speed it will actually um, affect the way this um, heat is transferred okay and we do have also some particular models that are fancy that actually can compute this quite precisely and computers will help us okay and this can be done uh, for several things actually those kind of models or approach are not just to evaluate the heat transfer but in general they are used in very sophisticated uh, manner okay so there are models when we talk about models in here we talk about um, potential way of formulating our problem and having a forecast out of it okay so we do have models that we need to use to forecast weather okay models to be used to forecast the certain behavior of something and if we talk about wind one thing that comes immediately to my mind is the wind tunnel that the engineer used to see the uh, how a certain engineering product eventually will uh, perform under some particular wind conditions right and there is a reason and this obviously has an, an implication in the daily life is there is a reason why a car or like on a highway a motorway a car eventually can go at a faster speed than a truck or a lorry right and then that lorry has to uh, also respect some other rules obviously uh if it, there is a windy conditions right if i don't have this object and wind is flowing in this direction it's a different story if i have the object like this and the wind is flowing in this direction right in here we don't have much more surface okay that is touching and more resistance indeed and then this in here it flows okay the way the air will flow, and I'm doing this with my hands for a purpose, the way it does also will allow some particular conditions. If we don't have this shape, but we don't have this shape, to have an airplane flying, okay? Because then something happens in here, but we will see this later on, and it will help the airplane to stay in the air okay and uh, then with this we can have also some uh, graphs if we do have these models that we are not going to uh, look at them uh, too much but in general we do have this uh, this is one of them in which we do have graphs where we do have temperature around uh, against wind speed okay and we do have different colors okay that actually can place us in different conditions from cold to very cold to very 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 cold that means okay? it depends on the things so and Again, we are not going to go into the details of these numbers, how these numbers have been computed, we don't care. 
and what this formula means. But in general, we do have like mathematical functions, mathematical formulations behind each of these models. Okay. That's why sometimes science it's considered to be a kind of serious business. Okay. But not all the time. <laughs> uh, see? Ah, thank you. Now, let's see what happens when we are dressing warmly. Okay? It's, uh, I think, something that we should do uh, in these days, right? In uh, dressing in layers, has more uh, adds variation in that R value that we introduce and we re were referring to when we were considering buildings, okay? And um, so it changes at the end of the day that value and helps prevent uh, heat loss, okay? It is particularly effective when layers of dry air are trapped between the layers of clothing or extra layers of insulation, okay? Uh, I'm not very familiar with the way uh, things are constructed in here. I'm not an engineer either. At least in Italy, okay, when they built in a kind of a proper manner, the uh, a new building. The external walls are made by two layers, let's say, of bricks. Okay, we are not talking about the structure here. Okay, but about the way. Why do we think do we have double layer of bricks? Exactly to actually have a better insulation. Okay, because we do have the two material and we do have air trapped into the uh, between them okay and this will it will be um, something that will allow the insulation like using double glazing exactly we do have two layers of glass and nothing in between right and that it's an insulation an improving of the insulation. Huh? Double glazing, yes, we do, they do. Yes, yes, most probably, yes. Okay, the, uh, the bricks, uh, they do it. I mean, they do have these bricks that are empty. When it's, yes, between the rooms, uh, they make it single, but otherwise, like, uh, double, yes. So this basically what they do is just changing that value and the insulation is uh, given by this trapping of hair. I think that a similar mechanism is also used uh, just to say, just to jump to a different example. When we do have scuba diving, right? The scuba diving, they do have the wetsuit. But why it's called wet? It's wet outside or inside? <laughs> it's outside, but you have some water infiltration. Exactly. And that little surface of liquid, of fluid, will it's up and will allow to keep the body temperature, not to lose it. In fact, that has some particular limits. Obviously, it had, it's suitable in some particular conditions. Then also makes the difference the thickness of the wet suit as well, because if it is like three millimeters, five or seven, it's to stay for a certain amount of time in cold water. Okay, but but they cannot be used. But they cannot be used in Antarctica. Right? Even if it's like instead of 10 millimeters, 30 millimeters, right? And in that particular case, we need to use the dry 
shoot, which is a completely different mechanism. Okay, but in general, that's the uh, the way. Would it dry? Yes, of course. Because, but that it's again because internally in that isolated system, because that system try to be isolated with the rest into the dry suit. The wearing, let's say, normal clothes or something that you're not naked into the dry uh, suit. It's again to keep the uh, operator warmer with the same system that we do have over here yes doesn't come in that's that's why it's dry but still inside that one yes but still inside that one they have to wear something in order to keep the body uh, warm enough okay so it means that I'm late, right? Okay. Coffee time. This extra insulation material, usually they will come. They're not very, they're like about this. So, I'm talking about the, the presentation. Could the text uh, be, oh, sorry, could the text occupy more space? There are a, a lot of <laughs> blank spaces. And if the text were a bit larger, um, oh, so you mean the fonts to be larger? The text. Yes, the text of the font. So this one, yes, instead yes, of being yes, this yes. size, this size. That's what you're talking about. The size of the text. The size of the text. That's it. So instead of this, like this. I think if it were as much as that. This one. It Next has time. a lot of, of space on top. It has a lot of space at the bottom. And there is less space for the text. Yes, but because the, the this kind of text is used to just to give hints, right? So there are like two components. Okay, thank you No problem. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. My pleasure.
Gracias. 